evening, everyone. It is Tuesday evening. It is so good to be with you today. Just a little bit of housekeeping, as you expect, of course. Keep your masks on. Be gentle and kind with one another. I'll also note that there is some ritual during today's service, and you may need Kleenex, and there are boxes of Kleenex around. Because it has been, there's a lot of sound happening. It's lovely. I feel like we're in heaven a little bit. The <laughs> angels are doing their thing. At any rate, it has been three years since we gathered together to remember those we have lost. And that's a long time. There's been so much loss. For those who have been to at least one Susi, you know that we usually combine all of life's transitions, including memorials, into one Thursday service. But this year, this hard year, there's just too much. So tonight, we will take time We'll take the time that our hearts and our bodies and our souls need to grieve the losses we've been carrying with one another. There will be time to celebrate other transitions on Thursday, but tonight we take the time. We light this chalice, which transforms shadow into light to remind us of our own living transforming the stuff of this world into the love and the activity of our daily lives. May this holy act of remembering bring forth transformation in ourselves. From grief, from he from grief comes healing, from memory, wholeness, and from honor, gratitude. Come, let us worship together. It may feel difficult to hold a space for gratitude in a service focused on our grief because there are so many for whom we grieve. But there is also so much to be grateful for because with every deep loss, there are these scraps of joy that we find scattered along the path before and behind us. There's a connection though we aren't always able to see it or feel it or aren't always ready or willing, there's a connection between grief and gratitude. Because every person we mourn tonight, named and unnamed, made an impact on the lives of those left behind. They made an impact on us. So as we begin tonight, we offer you an opportunity to embody these connections. Uh, we are going to have ushers who are going to be passing around in baskets and buckets and various things, some fabric and some markers. And as the baskets pass, we invite you to take two pieces of cloth and a marker, and please share the marker if, if we don't have enough. And as you are moved at any time during the service, we invite you to write down something you are grieving on one scrap and something that you are grateful for on the other. They might be connected. You might write down the name or names of people you are grieving on one, and on the other, write down some words that name some of what you are grateful for, for the relationship that you had to that person or, or people. Or they may not be connected at all. And if you want to just hold these cloths through the service and think about a grief and a gratitude and not write anything down, that's fine. Whether you write anything down or not, though, I invite you, at whatever moment makes sense to you, to tie them together. Connect your grief and your gratitude. Because when we sit in grief, 
Often what enables us to remain grounded is being able to see through our loss to that which ties us here, the people, the places, the connections to the moments and memories that we can hold on to. These scraps of memory and experience that we want to remember, reconnect, and carry forward with us that will in fact help carry us forward even as we grieve. And before the end of the service, at any time that moves you, you are welcome to then bring forth these cloths. There are some large laundry baskets on each end of where the candles are up here. Um, and you can also, uh, if, you, if you feel so moved, move candles into the, to the bowls of sand or whatever other action feels meaningful to you. Be aware of folks around you who may not be comfortable moving in the space. You might be able to deliver their cloths for them and their markers, because there will be baskets also at the exits. Um, if you haven't yet returned your cloth or your markers, um, you can put them there. These griefs and gratitudes will return to worship during the week as we continue our journey together, helping us make more embodied connections between our grief, our gratitude, and our covenant, covenanted commitments to one another and this Susie place we call home. For those of you who did not know Reverend Jean Pupke, the details would be that she was for 16 years the minister of the Richmond Church. She even ran for UUA president as I understand it, she virtually tripled the membership at the Richmond Church. She started her spiritual journey as a nun, a Catholic nun. And then the, on the way to becoming a UU minister, she was the CEO of two corporations. So you can get from that the breadth of her experience in life and what she brought to the pulpit. If you knew Reverend Jean Pupke, as someone who presided over our wedding, who was magnificent. I travel, I see many, many UU services, and Reverend Jean Pupke was fantastic. She had an incredible talent for seeing talent in others and getting them to use that talent to help the church. And I was so privileged that she knew my music. And during the pandemic, once a month, we prepared something together. We did services together. And for that, I am eternally grateful. And she always, she's one of the very few people that I would hear say, you need to change that. But she would say that. And so it was on an innocuous day after she was just about to retire and take her first vacation, we got an email that said that Reverend Jean had fallen and had seriously injured her spinal column. And we parsed that email over and over and over again because it just didn't make sense to us the way it was written. It just didn't seem to have any hope in it. And two days later, we got an email saying that she had passed away. The next morning I woke up with this song in my head, raw, about loss and about shock. It's called Past Tense. Mm -hmm. 
my mind would not read them in past tense. The letters they built a wall to me. No H, no O, no P, no E. No matter how hard we read and reread, is was am am not smiling smile. Started, stopped, came, went, now and beyond. Love, loved, here, gone. Love, loved, here, gone. This wasn't. When I touch my heart for you to see, they say that you fell as everyone will. We all fell with you, we're falling still. We Falling still is, was, am, am not smiling, smile started, stopped, came, went now and be. We will take time in a few minutes to honor those beloveds of our Susie community who died in the last year. But there are so many more beloveds whose loss we mourn. Let us pray. Spirit of life, creator, loving parent, mystery, God. We hold our grief tenderly tears coming unbidden as we make space in the, our hearts this evening for the grief to come. We know that so many have been lost in these impossibly hard years and the patterns and the rituals and the traditions we have known all too well to mark times of loss became impossible to conduct. And so we pray for those who died from COVID. And we pray for those who lost family members, friends, neighbors, people who were important to us, whose death from this horrible virus was so hard and often so fast, made more complicated by isolations, quarantines, and no way to give comfort before their death or memorialize properly after their death. Holy One, we speak their names to you to hold them. Carol.
We pray for those who died not from COVID, but perhaps from natural causes or other diseases, cancer, or accidents, or other ways. Those who we also struggle to comfort and memorialize properly because of the pandemic. Holy One, we lift these names to you in memory. Sandra Debus. Kathy Flicka. We pray for others who have died in our communities and our world, those we did not know, those who were also taken by COVID or war or mass shootings or other kinds of violence or natural disasters or so many other causes the death toll seems so high, it is impossible to conceive. And yet, divine mystery, we grieve the loss of life. Holy One, infinite all, hold us in our grief. Hold our hearts. May we find solace in sharing the tenderest parts of our humanity. And may we hear the prayers of our own hearts as we enter this moment of meditation. I am the Reverend Morris Hudgens. 
I have been coming to Susi for over 40 years, and it is my pleasure to be with you this evening. Every year, the joy of our coming together brings with it great sadness. For we notice the empty chairs in the dining hall and the song circles and the concert hours and the many other places where our beloveds gather with us at Susi. As Linnea Nelson writes, our sorrow is unbound, streaming in all directions. It is perhaps a little harder this year than most, as there has been a gap too long of time since we saw them and wish we could have had one more or two more or 10 more Susies with them. And yet, it is not to be. Our beloveds are no longer with us in body, but they are always with us in spirit. We are grateful that they were among us. Let us pause to honor and remember those beloved in this Susi community who have passed away in the last year. Kip Barkley. Bonnie Blue Kraus. Jim Davis, Kathy Jackson, and as of today, the Reverend Charlie Cast. the Reverend David Hicks McPherson, the Reverend Jean Pupke, Mindy Simmons, Jeannie Swan, the Reverend Mark Ward, Barbara Wilson, we honor their memory.
Good evening. My name is Adrian Graham, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. Though I am a newcomer to SUSE this year, it is an honor and a privilege to be with you and to share in your grieving. Tonight, I will offer you the words of the poet and essayist Maya Angelou, when great trees fall. When great trees fall, rocks on distant hills shudder. Lions hunker down in tall grasses, and even elephants lumber after safety. When great trees fall in forests, small things recoil into silence their senses eroded beyond fear. When great souls die, the air around us becomes light, rare, sterile. We breathe briefly, our eyes briefly see with a hurtful clarity. Our memory, suddenly sharpened, examines, gnaws on kind words unsaid, promised walks never taken. Great souls die, and our reality, bound to them, takes leave of us. Our souls, dependent upon their nurture, now shrink, wizened. Our minds, formed and informed by their radiance, fall away. We are not so much maddened as reduced to the unutterable ignorance of dark, cold caves. And when great souls die after a period, peace blooms slowly and always irregularly. Spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration. Our senses restored, never to be the same, whisper to us they existed they existed we can be be and be better for they existed It's hard for me to remember a time I didn't know Mindy Simmons. But I remember so clearly the day we met. 1997, South Florida Folk Festival. January, beautiful South Florida January day. We were standing one behind the other in the merch line to check our CDs and cassettes. We still had cassettes. To check them in at the artist table, and she was wise cracking with everybody she saw, whether she knew them or not. And I thought she was a sister. And then we started just singing together. She would just show up, and her voice would take all the other voices and make them work together as one. 
festival after festival after festival after concert after concert after concert. And then she came to Susie and you fell in love. And she fell in love. And she kept coming back and coming back and she got on staff and she worked with the youth and she taught them the rainbow principles song that many, many congregations now sing because those kids took that song home. And then she got on nightlife staff and then she became nightlife director. On February 9th, Mindy called me and said, hey, I think I'm gonna need some help with uh, seeing to it that my responsibilities at SUSE are covered. I'm not quite sure what's going on yet, but I'm gonna need some help. And I said, sure, what's going on? On the 14th of February, we knew it was very serious. On the 18th of February, Mindy was gone. A few days later, our friend here from Susie, who is not with us this year, but I think somebody's FaceTiming her or something right now so she can be with us, our friend Jane Upton talked to me and said, I need to write a song for Mindy. Could we do that? I've never written a song before, would you help me? And she gave the first line that became the title, that became the heart of the song. And now I have my friends Gary Gonzalez and Lisa Bone and Mina Greenfield to help us bring this song to you the first time it's ever come before people because it belongs to Mindy. You could come into a room and make the space more sacred Leave it all more holy by the kindness you created Your voice could echo through our souls long after you departed with simple words of courage, carry on. You help so many see the sun still shining through the darkness. Your laughter broke right through the pain, even when the times were hardest. And now it's ours to keep the faith with all the good you started. We can hear you clearly calling, carry on. the words and music for us all to sing the rainbow. You let the love wash over us and said just let it be so. Is that all there is we ask again and hear your voice down low. There's so much more my friends just carry on.
peace to the world, carry on, peace to ourselves, I wish you love, carry on, and I wish you friends, namaste. What Elizabeth didn't what Elizabeth didn't say is these, these make really good handkerchiefs too. <laughs> Holding our grief. <sighs> Typically, as we are taught as ministers in training, we are taught that our closing words should wrap things up a little, make it possible for people to leave a space after we've brought them into deep wells of emotion and exploration. And so I should be offering you some sort of mini making, something to make it better, some encouragement, some hope. Well, we have a few minutes. And so I invite you to stay present to what you're feeling, write your griefs and gratitudes, share these. Stay in this place where joy and sorrow is woven fine. Stay in this place where our grief meets our gratitude. This tender, tender place. And as you are so moved, you may join me. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me, comfort me. Comfort me, oh my soul. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, oh my soul. Sing.
comfort me. Comfort me. Comfort me. Comfort me, oh my soul. Isay Barnwell teaches us to listen more often than to things than to beings. It is the ancestor's breath where the quiet voice is heard. It is the ancestor's breath and the voice of the waters. Blessed be, go in peace.